All right. Hey, everybody. How's it going? How's it going? Let's see where we go today. Um, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, we are doing a beginner's astrology class. So if you have been confused about your birth chart or trying to figure out how it connects with another person or how to see past lives, well, we're not going to go that deep. But there's going to be a lot of content on the channel in the next couple of weeks through August. I'm going to start getting into my Twin Flame Astrology. I'm going to start talking about all of those charts that, not your names, of course, but what I have learned from those charts. And if you really want to get a good grounding in your own astrology and what, what it means and how to look at a chart, uh, check out the Beginner's Birth Class, Birth Chart Class, <laughs> happening on Tuesday. There's a link in the description box for you if you want to join us. It's a really good way to get yourself grounded. Gonna be talking a lot more about astrology, uh, especially the twin flame, like I said, uh, soul contract astrology uh, all throughout the month of August. So I had planned for it to be in July, but um, I kind of get the feeling that that North Node Uranus Mars conjunction that's happening at the beginning, uh, right? It's happening July 22nd through August 17th with a strong, strong moment in time happening July 31st. So I kind of feel like that had something to do with it, that like I was a little bit mistimed on that information that I was going to bring toward you. Because some things have happened in July that have really made it a very powerful thing, new learning for me. So I will share that with you from now through the end of July or August. All right, let's see where we go today with the morning message. Spirit guidance for you when you're seeing this. The Temptress. Don't get that card very often. 43, intuitive communication. Oh, I think I do know what this is about. Uh, eternal dance, movement, the wheel of life, the path of least resistance. So uh, we're going to be talking uh, quite a bit this week about that conjunction. In fact, I'll put a... Um, a link to a video I made yesterday about the North Node Uranus Mars conjunction. I feel like lots of things are going to show up in people's lives that are going to be a surprise and and karmically, okay? Like soul contracts showing up for you or recognizing soul contracts in a little mm, stronger way, right? Understanding what the relationship is here and what do we have to learn and how are we working together? Some of you recently or will in this next little span of time have someone show up who could be a Plutonic. I talk about that a little bit and I do have um, uh, some videos coming up when I'm talking about Twin Flames. I'm really talking about soul contracts in general. Twin Flames is a subset of that, okay? And how to look at, how to look at your astrology with another person to see that you have soul contracts that you do or you don't. Some it might be just a this life thing, a this life learning thing. But some of you go back, go back, go back. You go back lives and lives and lives with this person. And I'll, I'll teach you how to, to figure that out, okay, over the course of this next six weeks. So some of you may have had somebody show up that you're curious about. Like, what are they doing in my life? Or what am I meant to do with this person? Or how do I look at this relationship? Some of you may feel a little scared by this person or a little bit curious let's say curious i don't think scared is right but i think this person has a lot to teach you and i think that that can put you in a place of like do i want to learn this lesson how do i want to learn this lesson how do i want to learn it because when you're holding on to um when you're holding on to a belief system or a way of looking at uh, how someone comes into your life like, yep, this person must be love for me or yep, this person's a business partner or yes, this person's a boss or this is a family member. If you're looking at it through a one-dimensional kind of lens, I think what's happening is there's going to be uh, a bit of a awakening. We do have that, you know, with the North Node, uh, Uranus and Mars uh, energy coming in. There can be some surprises. There can be some, some soul contracts that are... Um, unveiled to you that might uh, get you uh, feeling a little unsettled. And that's kind of the point of it, is to get you out, rock you out of your rut, rock you out of your thinking uh, that things need to be a certain way. And I think over the course of the next few weeks, we're going to have our 
belief systems are th- the belief we have in certain institutions or way because it's collective right uranus and north node it's collective um things that we thought we could trust we're not gonna be able to trust anymore or feel safe with them it's in taurus so we're gonna have to create for ourselves how individually and as a collective things that make us feel safe things that make us feel grounded and we might have to really change uh what those things are okay how those structures work in our lives what they are now if there has been a relationship in your life that you felt you could always trust then there might be some kind of upheaval around that there might be some kind of like awareness that that person doesn't have the same goals in mind or something like that or that your work isn't going in the direction that you think it's going in and things might have to change things might have to shift don't think of it as like a destruction don't think of it as like a tower like oh to be run away from I think, in, in fact, I think the more you embrace this energy, the more you're going to be able to be the master of it. That's how I believe astrology works for us, is that we see energetic signatures and signposts, and we get to work with that energy. It's not being thrust upon us. All right? Okay. So let's see here where we go. I'm going to lay out the reading, and then we'll talk more about it. Any zodiac signs that do show up? Uh, I'll get some messages for those zodiac signs in the extended. Okay. All right. All right, Pathfinders. Let's see where we go. This seems like a big week to me for Pathfinders. We have my group, uh, your, the group we created together. How about that? We co-created it together and it really is a, a, a learning group. I love it. It's about, you know, us diving deep on questions that we have about our spiritual path. So let's see what's happening here. <laughs> yep. Fool, breaking free, walking towards our sun, walking towards our happiness, queen of swords, the six of swords, right? Moving out of anything that is stuck. I know I talked about that last week. You may have started to feel that energy last week. There's justice, a Libra, king of pentacles, four of pentacles, four of wands, lots of fours. Look at that and the emperor's a four as well. And that's Mars. Leo, Mar, Le- I'm sorry, Emperor. Leo, Aries, Libra, Ace of Cups, Page of Cups, sorry, Page of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles, and the Nine of Cups. I knew there was another cup in here somewhere. Um, I think we might, just an overarching view of this reading to me, and then I'll go through it one at a time. The overarching energy of this reading is you have a chance right now to, when something shows up in your life, you can either go closer to it or you can run away and stick your head in the sand. Now, I'm going to say to you that because of that North Node, Uranus and Mars conjunction, sticking your head in in the sand seems like a much less safe place to be than looking right at something. If you're, if you're, um, if you're wanting to run away, if you're running to escape and hide and block and not see something, um, then I think you're infinitely in more, I'm going to use the word danger, but it seems a little strong, but you're infinitely in more peril than unless, uh, than you would be if you looked straight at it. Okay. So, um, when you look straight at a thing, you can make some decisions about what to do about it. You can choose a balanced approach. You can choose to learn something from it that might open up your work, that might open up your, your um, um, connection with other people, that might open up how you're doing life in general. There's a gift that wants to come from this. And though it might seem, I'm not seeing any cards of like, woo, but this makes me feel, and I'll read you the temptress. um, It makes me feel like something is calling to you. And let's just read it right now since I said I would. Um, Something is calling to you. Now, the silent whispers of the heart, intuitive communication, and eternal dance. These are cards of connectedness, groundedness, path of least resistant, following your heart. So something is calling to you. Something is calling to you that needs your attention, that wants your attention. And you can choose 
to do the thing that's going to move you forward, the Aries energy, or you can choose to do the thing that's going to keep you stuck. I don't recommend standing in one place. This is a time for move, follow, or get out of the way. Okay, that's what this is all about. So let's see here. Um, in, uh, the temptress. You're being seduced with dazzling promises that will mostly not eventuate. In effect, you're being deceived, enticed into accepting something that will cause you much difficulty and eventually lead only to disappointment. Don't be seduced by the glitz and glamour or the holy and benevolent facade. Things are not what they seem. Incredible promises are simply that, incredible, not to be believed. Observe the image on this card. The temptress entices with her sensuous beauty and exotic surrounding, yet just behind her is the all-seeing eye of truth. It's staring you in the face all along. Take a few steps back. Perspective, right? Look at things from an objective and balanced perspective, and the real picture and hidden agenda will emerge. So this is something that you're being asked to follow your own seeing eye of truth, right? The sun there and the fool, the queen of swords. I love this. You're being asked to trust your intuition. And I've talked a lot about this on this channel, about how can, you know, my job as a tarot reader, not to tell you what's happening or not to tell you what to do. It's to share with the energies of what's going on. It's to share with you what's being asked of us through astrology and tarot so we can take action effectively, not just any old action, but effective action. And while sometimes doing nothing, not making a choice can be the right way to go. I'm not feeling that in this North Node, Uranus, Mars energy. Mars is about taking action and personal action. Even though North Node and Uranus is about a collective, it's something that's happening to all of us. But individually, we get the choice now of how to work with that energy. And I feel like uh, those of you who are resonating with this reading, what's being asked for you is to follow your heart, follow your joy, follow your bliss, follow your... Um, mission and path, follow your spiritual gifts, follow, you know, this, I love this path of least resistance and the intuitive communication. Some of you who have been um, resisting meditation or any kind of thing, now it's going to become kind of a necessity because you won't be able to trust the world around you for all of your guidance. You won't be able to trust the world around you to share with you which direction to go. It might have been a very um, easy decision at one point. It might have, you might have felt like, okay, well, this is my value system. And so I base my choices on that. There might be something coming along that's opening you up to a new way of looking at things, a new way of believing about things. Be not because you're, you're being like, uh, I don't know, like wobbly on your values, but because some of the things that we as a collective might have held dear as the truth are being shown to not be the truth, are being shown to not uh, have the, the power of permanence or the, the stature that we have, you know, sort of imbued it with, right? This is leadership. This is about the law. This is about... how. So some of, some of us may be seeing that institutions that we long held to be rock solid are, not going, to be, are going to be shown to not be rock solid. And so we are going to have to make our own decisions with our intuition and with our own um, kind of more flexible view. Our, our perspective is going to be not wobbly, but also not rigid. Okay, so it's possible that some of the institutions we imbued with our trust are going to be shown to be too rigid and they require us to manifest a way to work with our collective value system, first to decide what that collective value system is, and then to really push forward and move forward with that agenda here. Um, anything that is too rigid is going to 
likely crumble or likely to be shown to be full of holes or to be shown to not be um, as sturdy as we once thought it was. And individually in our lives, we might be seeing that certain relationships, this is kind of like when you recognize that your parents aren't Superman and Superwoman. When you recognize that your parents aren't who you thought they were. You know, when they're big people and you're a little infant and a toddler and a young child into your teens, well, not into your teens, but definitely as a young child, you can see them as infallible. You can see them as having all the answers and knowing what to do. And later on, you see them as knowing nothing, okay? And then in your 30s, it's the time when you finally balance that out and you see them as regular people who make mistakes and who have, are not perfect and who have the capability of, uh, instead of being like, you know, this is just the way, my way or the highway, it's now more of like, well, this is how... Uh, I look at the world and this is how I believe it to be true. And even their belief systems can be being questioned to them, that this is what I always believe to be true and it's not true. So we're being asked to kind of give ourselves a break and give people a break and give the collective a break. But like, what do we want then to manifest? And I did talk about that a lot in that North Node Uranus Mars conjunction video I posted yesterday. So this is now more likely something that is showing up in our lives or in your personal life to give you more of the power, the individual, give you more of the power to say, oh, I always thought that love was like this. Well, it's not really like that. It's not really showing up like that. Oh, you know, I always thought twin flame to be this. Oh, it's not really, that's not how it's really working in my particular life. Now I'm gonna clarify this temptress because I think the temptress in this instance is the temptation to set it and forget it. The temptation to believe that a thing is always a thing. A person is always that same person. Um, a relationship is always going to be the same. And I think um, the temptation for us to set it and forget it gets us in trouble for pentacles. It gets us thinking too small. It gets us to um, abdicate our responsibility in relationship. You think a relationship is always gonna be the same, there's never any effort put into it, and then it collapses and you wonder why, okay? So please clarify this temptress for me. Three of Wands, Page of Swords, Ten of Wands, Seven of Swords, Five of Swords, and The Fool. So, some of you feel like you always get duped or you always get lied to or you always attract in people who are toxic to you. And the, the temptation is to abdicate responsibility for that. But I feel like you're, you're taking your responsibility very seriously, in fact, about the relationships that are attracted into your life. You're now seeing that you're not powerless. And with that comes the companion of, yes, I'm responsible for what's showing up in my life. I am not powerless, right? I see my astrology chart. Oh, Saturn, you're killing me. It's not, it's not the end. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of understanding that you can work with Saturn energy. Yeah, you can. Saturn's not coming along. It's not personal. Saturn, not, Saturn is not coming along to crush you. Saturn is here to give you boundaries and show you responsibility and show you what works for you, okay? And it requires your participation. And I feel like this temptress has been about things that we collectively or in our individual lives think can go along without our participation. And it's just not true. Every single thing in your life requires you to interact with it. And this is being shown in experimental physics, where we're learning that when you experience, when you watch a thing, when you put your energy to a thing, you change the energy of the thing. So things that are allowed to just kind of like go on on their own without any kind of attention by you are, I think what we're seeing here, are doomed to collapse. It requires your participation. And 
so the temptress is saying you can no longer be an inanimate object. You can no longer be um, a, a bystander in your own life, in the life of your family, in the life of your relationships, in the life of your work, in the life of your family's family, in the life of your community, in the life of your siblings. In the, anything you want to cultivate requires your attention and activated energy. It requires you to do something, to change it with your gaze, to change it by looking at it, change it in the way that you want to change it. And that's the seductress. The seductress is, oh, you don't have to do anything. It'll just all work out. I'm here to tell you, it's time to move away from that kind of thinking because you're going to see that nothing is on remote control. Nothing is on autopilot. It requires each and every one of us collectively for the collective and it requires individually for us to take action in our own lives. So let's talk about that. All right, let's see where we go. I will give special messages for uh, Leo and Aries and Libra. That's what it looks like to me today. Leo and Aries and Libra. All right. So link is below if you want to continue on with me. This is the morning message for uh, July <laughs> 25th. 25th. Um, and if you're part of Pathfinders, the link is below. Or Yeah. No. <laughs> if you're part of Pathfinders, the rest of the message starts right now. The link is below if you're not part of Pathfinders. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.